Lately on this channel, I've been exploring cheap real estate, and with that, it has a way of taking me to some less than desirable places. But what if the best cheap house option was right in your backyard? This cute little white house standing before us is a 400 square foot micro home. And not long ago, it used to be a garage sitting collecting dust for years. There are so many homes all over the US with garages that people don't actually use. So why don't we take a look into converting them into actual living spaces? Hi, I'm Sarah. Welcome to my Airbnb. It's called the Landing Suite for obvious reasons. Uh, come on in. Sarah uses her garage conversion as a short-term rental, but it's well equipped for extended stays as well. This garage, no one was ever gonna drive a car into it. Mm -hmm. It was too old, too rickety, and so why not make it into something that can make you money? Before we dive into the numbers of how much this costs and how you can do it too, let's just take a tour because this Airbnb Sarah designed is so cute. So this is the kitchen. Everyone told me it was way too elaborate for such a tiny, small Airbnb space, but I love kitchens, so I really wanted to go all out. The Ilv range was a must and the Smeg fridge. Those are my dream appliances, so we just went for it. The windows actually didn't exist before. None of these windows up here are the skylights, nothing. They were all put in because it was a dark, gloomy, sad, space so we put in the windows got it at the reuse store like the architectural salvage store this painting up here was originally in the garage and i just think it's awesome the countertop i really wanted to make it look like really thick marble so i did this super thick edge but in reality it's just like two centimeters the lighting is mostly rejuvenation i went crazy with the lighting in here, especially the light switches. I can't get enough of. We have a small dining area. Then we have the bathroom. A water closet isn't usually that exciting. There's a few things that I did in here that I love. The tile wall was a really small cost effective way to do something dramatic. My sister-in-law painted this incredible mural. Everyone thinks that it's wallpaper, but it's all hand painted. This was a garage. This is where the space ended. So the bathroom and this tub area didn't exist, but there was a lean-to shed outside. And because the roof was already there, we just basically enclosed it. It's a really awkward space to put a bathroom with a long, skinny, narrow. It's hard to figure out in terms of floor plan. So we put a bathtub here. We love the bathtub. It's a great feature to have. Although this was an existing space, almost nothing is original except for this door. This was the entrance door and it has like this blue spray paint and whatnot. So this is kind of a peek into what the garage looked like before. Um, and then this just hides our laundry, which is a great feature to have in an Airbnb, if not for your guests, but for your cleaner. The rest of this Airbnb is kind of our living area. You have like your bed, which is just a headboard from Habitat for Humanity store. The couch is from Ikea, it pulls out. I found this chair at the Habitat for Humanity store for 25 bucks. I was like, oh, that's a cool chair. I'll pick it up, grab it, brought it home, looked great, and then I went to Restoration Hardware a few weeks later and realized it's a Restoration Hardware chair. <laughs> Pretty much everything is redone. The light, the siding, the windows, everything is new. We just copied what was existing. I really loved the look of the cedar siding and so we just replicated that. We also kept the garage doors original because of the character. I just loved them and I would not let that go. <laughs> How much did it cost to create this Airbnb? This Airbnb kind of came out to be about $120,000. We actually bought this whole property. There's a house next door. We fenced it off and then this was the existing garage. When you first toured the property, how did, did you tour like several garages? Like how did you know this was one that you could convert? The dream was always to have this as an Airbnb, just because it was another space. 
not necessarily anything amazing to begin with. Mm -hmm. It was just existing. They bought the property in May of 2020 for $336,000. It came with a main house as well as the garage. They put $50,000 into the main house remodel and rent it for about $2,000 a month. They then put roughly $120,000 into the garage where on average they make $2,500 a month. Sarah's conversion is beautiful and I think we can all appreciate such a gorgeous space, but you don't have to spend this much money. So my dad is super budget. He is the biggest penny pincher I've ever met in my so life. So how much did they do theirs for? So they did theirs for 40K. What do you think someone could do it for the cheapest? I think what my dad did was the cheapest, mm -hmm. but he had an existing bathroom in that garage. It's one of the reasons why he bought his property. Wow. The biggest surprise to me in this whole build was the fact that nothing was really that salvageable. I would have thought the whole point of converting a garage is because you're saving some money on having some framing, having a structure there, but that's really not the case. Here are some of their biggest expenses they incurred, including reframing, foundation, new concrete slab, plumbing, siding installation, flooring installation, electrical, and ceiling work. So it sounds kind of of like if you're going into a garage conversion, you should expect to have to redo everything. And the thing you should focus on more is like the lot itself and if it's usable. Yeah, definitely. Now let's go garage conversion hunting for ourselves. As you can see from this aerial shot, there are so many homes around us with these detached garages. And I think Sarah brings up a really good point. People don't use detached garages very much. First up, we are in Magnolia. It's one of the nicer neighborhoods here in Seattle. So prices are going to be on the higher end here. This home is listed in the 900,000s range. It is a super cute house with a nice big yard. What's nice about Magnolia though, as well is it's one of the few neighborhoods where you can find these older homes on really large lots with these garages. So this is an older 1920s home. It kind of feels very cabin-like right into the kitchen here. You have a dining space and what we came for is the garage. Looks like there's a lock, so I hope this key works. And we're in. This is a significantly smaller space. You have a little bit of room where you could elongate it and maybe add a bathroom. They're building an addition in the back of this yard. And there's one right there. They're really just popping up all over Seattle. The siding is good. This structure is in good shape, but you are really close to the main house here. I think this one is interesting, but it's just a little bit too small and not enough privacy to kind of section off the lot. Let's keep searching. This next home is bordering Greenwood in Ballard, and Greenwood is actually the top neighborhood in Seattle where ADUs and kind of garage conversions are being done statistically. So I'm not surprised that our search took us here. This house is 810 square feet, so not super big, but it's a decent layout. It opens right up to an open living space with vaulted ceilings and skylights. Here you have the kitchen area. Update the kitchen, make it look aesthetically a little bit nicer. A mudroom pantry over there, and then just the two bedrooms. So here is the first bedroom. And here is the second bedroom and a full bathroom with washer and dryer. They put zero effort into making this thing presentable to buy. The photos don't look any good, but it's actually got like a totally fine layout. And now let's go outside. Outside you have this side yard and basically what was once a garage. There's also alleyway access off of the home. So similar to Sarah's, you could actually pull a car in here. And inside here, we've got the unfinished garage. It, it looks like this would be a bathroom framed out right here. And then vaulted ceilings again. You could probably do a kitchen right on that wall and like just a bed right here and have a little kind of mini Airbnb. So no electrical or plumbing out here. So you can kind of dedicate this space to it. And then that house gets the really long front yard. 
And then you can see right here is the side yard. Okay, I think this is actually the perfect house to do this with. Now we're in Shoreline. This is a city above Seattle. So no longer in the Seattle city limits, but it's a really popular place for people to move to afford more single family home. This one behind me, it is a small home at 810 square feet, but it's only $620,000. Here in Shoreline, you will find just normal feeling neighborhoods. With single family homes, it doesn't feel super, super dense. As you can see, a lot of mature trees. It's really cute. Lots of single family homes, ramblers, and we're gonna head inside this one. This home opens right up into a living space. And then you'll turn the corner, the kitchen. Looks like it was updated maybe in the 90s. A Little bit of a dining nook here. Here is a bedroom. Another bedroom and your full bathroom. Pretty simple house. Now let's check out outside. Oh, I was not expecting this. It is an attached garage, but a pretty big one. So in here you've got the water heater, washer and dryer, furnace. Every once in a while you actually do see people convert an attached garage into a primary suite, something like that. Already got your water hooked up, you've already got electric, you've got your roof, you've got your siding. All you need to do here is insulate it, drywall, and you've got more home. Now it does raise the question in all of this, is it worth taking your garage and converting it out of a garage? Because garages do hold values in homes. I meet a lot of people that not having a garage is a deal breaker for them. You're trying to convert your garage to add value, but at the same time, you're taking away value from your home by taking out your garage. I've been doing some digging and it's a little bit tricky to figure out if if it actually is cost effective and a good return on investment to convert your garage into a livable space. Um, but what we do know is typically appraisers will appraise a garage as about a quarter of the price per square foot of the home. So in Sarah's case, she had a price per square foot when she bought it of about $370. So her garage price per square foot was about $90. Whereas when you're able to convert that into a permitted livable space, it's going to be a lot more in line with the typical price per square foot of the house. So although taking away your garage does take away parking and it does take away value, finishing it out also does add a lot of value. We live in a time where people really, really really do value a money-making asset. All in all, garage conversions are one of the cheapest and easiest ways to add value and an income-producing asset to your home, but finding the right conversion to do on the right home is hard. Not every home is going to make sense to do this for and be the best ROI. It's important to take into consideration how the garage is situated on the lot, the condition of the roof, siding, foundation, is there electrical, is there plumbing? If you have these things, you're really gonna save a lot of money on this conversion, but if you don't have these things, it might not even make sense to do it. Thanks so much to Sarah for opening up her Airbnb for us. It's super cool. If you find yourself in the Seattle area near the airport and you need a place to stay, I'll have the landing suite linked below. Definitely would recommend it. It's very, very cute. Thanks for watching this video. If you do have more questions on dadus, you can go watch my video linked below and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.